Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with Google Glass. Now this is the Explorer Edition, also referred to as Google Glass 2.0, and that's because it is actually the revision of the original product, finally starting to make its way into retail channels. I won't say you're going to see this at a store anytime soon, but at least Google is starting to pony up uh, invites that before were really difficult to attain. And essentially what you're looking at is a $1,500 wearable computer, uh, the innards of basically a top tier phone from a couple of years ago. You've got a Texas Instrument uh, OMAP processor, uh, a gig of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage of which 12 are accessible, a micro USB port right there for charging, uh, as well as transfer in the event you actually needed to, but Glass is totally networked and capable of doing just about everything on its own. Of course, Wi-Fi, you have a prism here which allows you to visualize a 25 and a half inch HD display or the equivalency of that from around, I believe, six to eight feet in terms of distance that can be adjusted. Uh, the glasses really can't be adjusted. They are a one size fits all, which for me hasn't been too much of an issue. You may have noticed that the actual nose pieces are not identical and that's because you know clearly uh, you've got to be able to support all the gear that is on the right side uh, the bone transducer at the back here is how you hear things if you're not using the actual earpiece that's included keep in mind for those of you that think that this is not going to be audible to those around you it will uh, it may be a cool technological uh, bragging right but in terms of actual functionality uh, those around you will hear uh, any messages being read back or any sort of playback, uh, video, whatever it may be. And that's part of the Explore Edition that I'm going to be talking about through the course of this video. In terms of buttons, very minimalistic here. And that's what's nice about this, considering this is still somewhat of a prototype, even though it's being sold for $1,500 now to people willing to call themselves explorers, if you can really take on that title for buying such an expensive piece of uh, technological kit then you are getting, in my opinion, a look at the future. Uh, I kind of felt that way about this device before getting my hands on it and after using it uh, with my Moto X here uh, and a couple of other devices, it really does represent a whole nother level of computing. Now, whether or not people are ever going to want to wear this uh, contraption that I think many will refer to it as ra uh, rather than uh, the actual piece of, in my opinion, uh, incredible design and engineering that it represents, uh, I'm not sure, but for actual corporate use uh, in the workplace and throughout a variety of different practical applications for regular home users and general consumers, Glass really does have some limitless capabilities. Uh, one thing I didn't point out, a 5 megapixel camera right there capable of 720p video capture. You actually have a capture button right here but you can also trigger everything with voice commands or use the touchpad here, which is how you navigate in and out through all of Glass's menus, which I most likely will end up demoing for all of you at some point. Uh, the prism and display experience, a little bit difficult to get used to. I do find that I'm often using one eye uh, literally to focus. I'm closing my left eye. Now, keep in mind, I do wear contacts when using this. Uh, I would love to have prescriptions on these. It would make life a lot easier, but until I would actually know that I'd wear something like this on a consistent basis, I wouldn't be jumping to throw uh, scripts on here, and I think that's why Google has been slow to actually do so themselves, although we are starting to see that, as I've mentioned in previous videos. Battery life has been, or I should say, leaves quite a bit to be desired. That's at least initially. Um, I'm not going to give any firm times, but depending on your use, depending on how amazed you are by this tech and how crazy you go with it, uh, you'll find yourself chewing through it pretty quickly, uh, at least so far in my experience. In terms of comfort, no problems, really lightweight, and it's really just all about will your eye adjust to viewing this. So some people having no problems, uh, you know, don't need to close the left eye in order to view. I think that also has to do with whether or not your left or right eye is stronger, a whole variety of different things. Uh, there is a sensor right there to, to detect whether or not you're using glass, which will shut it down, uh, conserve battery life the same way that the Moto X will basically, uh, you know, try to preserve and maintain battery life based on whether or not you pick it up and whether it senses it's actually in use. A lot of phones are doing this, Samsung as well, uh, but Glass really innovative, no question. Uh, it goes far beyond just what you may think at surface value, uh, which would primarily be used for things like calling, searching, navigating, 
Uh, you really can truly browse the web on there. Whether or not it's going to be a comfortable experience, again, really comes down to how comfortable you are using the device altogether. Uh, for me, it has been a struggle. I'm still trying to accommodate and accustom or get accustomed to the experience of using this. Uh, but part of that challenge, as I mentioned before, is my vision. Most people, I think, uh, that will pick up glass won't be dealing with that. Another thing I want to point out is actual content. This is the glass application uh, that you will be using or that you should be using, of course, you have to, uh, that accompanies glass on your companion Android uh, driven device. In this case, it is the Moto X. I am running KitKat. Uh, and Oddly enough, both of them made by Google here in the U.S., which is pretty cool. Something you don't see anymore. Cutting edge tech actually made in America. Uh, but patriotism aside, you can see we can add contacts, something you will have to do. It does not natively import your uh, Google uh, associated contacts. You'll have to actually put them into glass or so really select who you want to interact with using this wearable computer that allows you to really do things instantaneously that no other device can. People would argue a smartphone, but you're not always going to have hands-free capability, are you, with a smartphone? In fact, it's the opposite of hands-free, whereas with glass, completely hands-free, as long as it doesn't make you cross-eyed or give you brain cancer. And I'm not kidding with that. I'm not trying to be cute. It is something where I think we all have to wonder. I don't know what the radiation ratings are on this, but it's another thing to be discussed in another video. But focusing again on here, we've got contacts and then a whole host of different software integration. Uh, when this first launched, things were really limited. Now you think, see that we have a CNN, Evernote, a Facebook, Field Trip, of course, Gmail, Google Now, Google Plus, The New York Times, Path, uh, Twitter, L. I mean, the list goes on and on. You want music, of course. Um, a big one for all you golf fanatics is having a golf site by Skydroid. I mean, I do imagine that at some point we're going to see a revision of this device or some other manufacturer making it for all of you golf nuts so that you're able to actually see not just distance to the hole using GPS, uh, but actual uh, all, all different types of uh, information and actual use of the prism uh, to show you lie and things and terrain that clearly glass isn't capable of, but just starts to scratch the surface of capability. But that's a great app for golfers, especially since cell phones really frowned upon, if not at all allowed on uh, many courses. So a cool uh, thing for golfers out there, I think glass is a unique device, especially the POV capture uh, of your swing. You'll know whether or not you pulled your head up, not that you wouldn't know that to begin with. Moving along, there are so many things, even uh, a Jewish guide for glass, oddly enough. Uh, but so many things here, and I only expect that this is going to continue to grow. You've got all of your fitness-related applications, from cycling to running, uh, sports updates, uh, actual timers, Tumblr, everything. Uh, even WordPress now is making its way here. One of the coolest, though, is that world, uh, or excuse me, word lens, which allows you to look at text and actively see it translated uh, on glass. So that's an incredibly cool thing. Uh, that's one of the areas that I think glass has so much potential when you think about uh, tutorials, uh, even something simple like having to put together the furniture you've uh, purchased from Ikea. Think about being able to instantly download uh, a manual or have that manual in front of you while you're working. And this applies to so many different areas, fields of uh, both actual work as well as things you do in your leisure. Uh, and while Google may continue to present Glass as a device that's going to really allow you to continue to live your life normally and not have technology hamper or get in the way of what you should be experiencing, clearly many consumers look at this as the opposite of that. You're wearing headgear now that is pretty much just your smartphone in a wearable form. But a lot of that, because it's hand-free, because of that point-of-view camera, and integration with your smartphone and everything you've already become accustomed to in your Android experience, it really does offer a whole nother dimension to not only mobile computing, but computing in general. So, so far I'm really impressed. Again, my biggest challenge is my own vision, which I can't really blame on glass. For those of you who don't have any challenges when it comes to eyesight, I think glass is going to be something you're going to enjoy. Uh, but that focus issue I mentioned before has a, a lot also, I'm talking about the prism of course, has a lot to do with what is around you, what light, light sources, are you in a dark room, a bright environment, that those type of things are going to affect usability, which I think many uh, users expect, 
but I wanted to point out anyway. So, so far, that sort of sums up my experience with Glass. Again, when it comes to actually giving all of you a demo of performance, uh, I'll get there. I'm not there yet because, quite frankly, I'm not comfortable enough with it. Uh, but once I'm there, you absolutely will have yet another update on Glass. But so far, really impressed with what Google's outlook for the future is. Yes, it's very expensive at $1,500, still only based on uh, an invite-only system. But as I mentioned, Google finally starting to open up and at least expand the Explorer program at the very least since they're clearly running behind their original schedule for rolling this out to the general public. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.